Hey friend, listen, if you formed an LLC recently and you think that's all it takes to maintain that limited liability and to really be a boss and have your LLC in order, guess what? Hate to break it to you, but there are a few more steps that you need to take to maintain your LLC. But have no fear, I am going to break all of that down in this video. So let's jump right in. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tammy Shambade. I'm a Houston-based attorney and the host of Ask Tammy Live, where we discuss the best ways to establish your business, protect your name, and keep your profits. And today's question of the day is, how do I maintain my limited liability company? Essentially, what you're asking is, how do I maintain my limited liability? How do I stay protected? Because isn't that the point of getting the LLC in the first place? It's to take advantage of certain tax benefits. It's to make sure that you are protected from a legal standpoint, right? Well, guess what? That protection will fly away from you if you don't maintain your LLC the right way. So let's talk about it. First thing I want to talk about are what are some of the potential things that could happen if you don't protect or maintain your LLC. Well, if you enter into some type of, let's, I'll give you a couple of uh, scenarios, things that I've seen. Um, I've had individuals who want to file a trademark application and then we'll be wanting to file that trademark application in the name of the business. But then when we do the research, we find out that, hey, your business is not actually formed. What does that mean? That means if they continue with forming that trademark or registering that trademark with an LLC that is out of status, that's going to violate or void that trademark application because it wasn't a legitimate business that submitted the application. That's one area where that we see this come to play. Another area that this comes into play is let's say you are doing business in a particular state and something happens and you want to sue somebody and you're getting ready to go to the court and file this lawsuit on, you know, from your business perspective, but then you get there and you find out that your LLC is not in existence. Guess what? You're going to run into issues because again, you are out of status, right? So you need to make sure you maintain your LLC. I mean, this is a huge thing. And then when you don't maintain your LLC, you open up opening yourself up to additional risk. So those are some of the major things that I want you to keep in mind when we're talking about why you should even care about this. All right, so what do you need to do now that you know that, oh, I don't wanna lose that, <laughs> right? So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you maintain your annual reporting. What do I mean? In every state where LLCs are allowed, which is in all the states, they require you to do some form of an annual report. That annual report is you basically letting them know, hey, this is the updated information about the owners or the managers. This is how much we made. Uh, this is our registered agent information, things like that. If there are any changes, they want to know because part of the reason why you have an LLC registered is so that people can have access in terms of um, if there was some type of lawsuit. And so if something happens, they need to know this information. Now, different states also may have a fee that's associated with it. So states like California, California has an annual $800 fee that you just got to pay. Um, Delaware has a similar fee, but it's not as expensive. California is very much so on the high end. Um, Texas does not have an annual fee that you need to pay unless you make a certain amount each year. So if you can, it's closer to 2 million at this point. So if you're making around $2 million in terms of gross revenue, then you're going to be responsible for what they call a franchise tax. I know the name is very deceitful because you hear franchise and you think, oh, this is just for people who are franchises. But no, in the state of Texas, it's for LLCs as well. It's if it's dependent upon how much your annual revenue is. Okay. So you again have to make sure you are doing the annual reporting and any associated fees. Okay. Now the second thing that you want to do in order to maintain your limited liability status, right? That comes with your um, limited liability company is you want to keep your documentation separate. If you've watched my videos on LLCs in the past, you've probably heard me say this like a million times and, um, still the same. <laughs> keep your personal assets separate from your business assets. Okay. Right. So separate bank accounts, right? So contracts, just keep it clean. It's going to help you too. It's going to help you when it comes time for taxes. It's going to help you in terms of just keeping yourself organized, keep them separate. Right. Um, so that's the second thing that you want to make sure you do. The third thing that you want to do, and this one nobody talks about, is you want to keep your LLC funded. Now, we know that as you're starting your business, you might not have any income, you're just getting started, you might even be operating at a bit of a loss when you're just getting started, and that's understandable, and it's okay. 
But then there comes a certain point where it's like, if you're engaging in certain types of contracts or in certain types of behavior as a business that basically sounds like you got a lot of money. Um, and this sounds very vague, what I'm trying to say, but essentially what I'm trying to, to articulate is you need to make sure that you're thinking about ways to keeping your LLC funded. One thing that I see people do is, you know, you have your LLC and you, you generate your income, but then you take all that money out and you put it in your personal business or in your personal account. And I mean that you get to keep your profits for sure. But in terms of responsible LLC maintenance, there should be money in the LLC that is at least enough to maintain all of the ongoing fees associated with your LLC. So you want to make sure you're keeping it funded. Now, again, these three steps that I spoke about are critical. There are a couple of other things that you can do in terms of just limited liability protection, like signing your documents appropriately. What do I mean? I mean, if you're entering into a contract, don't enter into the contract as a person, as yourself, um, enter into the contract in your professional role for the business. So I'm not going to sign any lease agreements that say Tammy Shambade. I'm going to say these agreements are for the law office of Tammy Shambade and it's signed by Tammy Shambade managing member. Do you get what I'm saying? So like signing your documents on behalf of the organization and putting on your specific cap as it pertains to your role in the LLC. Those are the things that you do that maintain that separation and say, hey, I'm serious about my business, okay? You really want to make sure you do that. Now, if you're hearing all of this and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I've never done that. What is Tammy talking about? I formed an LLC about 20 years ago and I've never submitted a document. Okay, let me tell you, uh, your LLC probably doesn't exist anymore. And if you're operating and doing business with it, you're you're really playing around. You're, you're being pretty risky. But I also want to encourage you that you can reinstate your LLC. What does that mean? That means you can go back and resubmit filings and catch up with your late fees and do whatever it is that you need to do that you didn't do in most states. So they will allow you to submit documentation that says, okay, I haven't filed in the past three years. Here are my late fees and they don't need to be super significant. They vary from state to state, um, but you pay up the late fees. If their taxes due, you pay the taxes and then you receive some communication that comes from the secretary of state. You fill out whatever forms you need to fill out there. You also need to fill out some forms with your comptroller's office and then you submit the forms to the respective parties and they they don't always communicate with each other so that's why there's all this back and forth but essentially by the time you receive the information and submit it to the right person this group and that group and all the groups get all their paperwork and all that stuff they will reinstate your llc and you'll be able to move forward why might people do this Here's where I see it come up um, often where people are like, you know what, I'm going to reinstate my LLC. Maybe you're trying to get some type of loan approval and you don't want to start afresh because you want to have the longevity of your business behind you, right? If you start afresh, you might not be able to qualify for certain loans or for certain um, types of credit. And so to have the longevity of the time that you've had in the past, you may want to reinstate your LLC. All right. So that's where I see it come up. It's when people are up for opportunities where longevity matters a lot. And that's in a lot of instances. <laughs> All right. Um, now, I hope that this didn't scare you. I hope that this helped you. And you're like, okay, now I know what I need to do. Like, do not play games with maintaining your LLC. It's critical. It's critical. It's critical. Now, if this video has been helpful to you, you might want more information or you want my, you might be asking, Hey, Timmy, how can I stay connected with you? Um, download our level up your business checklist. It's a great checklist that tells you exactly what we do for our businesses and how we help them to make sure that they are protected and established. Essentially, we want to help you protect what you create. And that's what the checklist talks about. Um, and when you sign up for that checklist, when you download that checklist, you will also receive an exclusive bonus invitation to our new private community where we we have a growing resource hub. You have access to free courses that I've made. You have access to articles that I've made um, written. You have access to videos. You have access to a whole lot of stuff in this resource hub. And it's all available to you for free if you download the checklist. So go ahead and do that. Um, now, before we go, I'm going to ask you in the comment section below, let me know. Let's be honest. Let's be honest out here. How many of you struggle with keeping up with maintaining your LLC? And what are one or two things you think you can do to improve that? We have some things that we do for our clients. Essentially, we do it for them. <laughs> um, and that's one thing that you could look into. But what are the things that you have found that have helped you to maintain your LLC? Or what were the things that kind of caused you to mess up? We want to hear it. All right, that's all I have for you today. Talk to you soon. Bye.